Hi, my name is Betsy. I'm an activist and I'm a Romani Gypsy. And currently, my community are facing a mental health crisis. And the reason why I'm here is not only because of my ethnicity, but because of my experiences um, and what I've had to suffer with, but also what my family members have had to suffer throughout the years. This is my Uncle Bob. There he is. Back in 2008, he tragically took his own life. You're right, so I've just had to get outside, um, outside the house to talk about this. A lot of the time, mental health isn't really talked about. In our community, we tend to use the word bad nerves or stress to explain how we're feeling. So I want to get to the heart of this and explore some of the things that young gypsies and travellers are up against. I'm going to start my journey by speaking to Jonathan Lee from the European Roma Rights Centre. Uh, in general, if you're a gypsy traveller, you're going to have an average life expectancy that's 10 years lower than that of the general population. Um, if you're a mother, you're about 20 times more likely to have experienced the death of a child. Um, the mental health picture is much more shocking for gypsies and travellers. You're nearly three times more likely to suffer from anxiety, just over twice as likely to suffer from depression. Um, and about seven times more likely to die by suicide than the general population. More anecdotally, you hear stories all the time about Romanian traveller people being refused access to medical care or given inferior quality care. Uh, you hear about healthcare professionals refusing to visit pregnant mothers, difficulties registering with a doctor because of a lack of fixed address. Sometimes uh, if admin staff will see a gypsy name on paper, um, you might have longer waiting times or racist remarks and these kind of things all contribute to much worse health outcomes for gypsies and travellers. Mental health is no new news to our people. So when you hear it like that, it really puts it into perspective. John also mentioned how negative attitudes affect travellers' experiences in healthcare. And this also led me to think about how the very same negative attitudes affect children's experiences in schools. Let's speak to Dr. Patricia Stapleton from Traveller Movement. Let's go and find out a little bit more. So a lot of the young travellers we have supported would experience things like discrimination, mm. racist bullying, uh, teachers having low expectations. Um, but also experiencing high levels of exclusion. We have analysed the statistics from the Children's Commissioner, we analysed the statistics from the Department for Education. What we found is very much in line with those stats is that children are from gypsy traveller backgrounds are four times more likely to be excluded from school. And what we've also found in our education project, also in line with those stats, is that most of those are unlawful mm -hmm. and are overturned on appeal. So earlier this year we published our Good Practice Guide to Education. Um, this was based on three years worth of case studies and three years worth of evidence working with families. Um, off the back of that we issued recommendations. So for schools we said things like they should celebrate Chips Traveller History Month, mm. taking a whole school approach to bullying. What that means is that both teachers and pupils are trained in anti-bullying, that they recognise bullying when they see it, and um, that they can address it sufficiently. We also suggested that schools get equality training. We, uh, we said that because basically a lot of teachers and head teachers don't know that gypsies and travellers are ethnic minorities mm -hmm. so actually they don't recognise racist bullying or discrimination mm -hmm. when they see it. So the school curriculum is very important in terms of educating young people and young children about how they view society and at the moment the school curriculum is exclusive because it doesn't include the, the experiences and the history of Gypsy Roma yeah. and traveller communities and consequently what happens is young people at a very early age develop stereotypes around these groups, stereotypes that are fueled by the media. So what we need is an inclusive curriculum that's accurate and that reflects the history of GRT communities in a positive and inclusive way. I can't tell you how empowering it would have been to have my history or ethnicity reflected in a positive way at school. So after speaking to the experts, it is so clear that there is so much that schools can do to support young people's mental health and, in the process, improve education outcomes. So I've been thinking about the chat I had with John earlier and some of the issues travellers face accessing healthcare. I want to know why so many people aren't reaching out for help. 
I'm gonna go and speak to Tyler Hatwell. He is the founder of Traveller Pride and a psychotherapist. You're gonna be coming up against a community that has encountered discrimination, specifically maybe from the NHS, as you have to be actively going out and reaching, you have yeah. to be actively anti-discriminatory. And there's a trust that needs to be rebuilt and that will take time, so do it properly. I was so pleased to speak to Tyler, a mental health expert and who is also a traveller. Now let's speak to Sarah Sweeney from Friends, Family and Travellers to find out what more can be done to tackle mental health inequalities at a national and local level. There's a number of things that really need to happen if inequalities are to be tackled. First of all, uh, local CCGs need to understand their local gypsy and traveller populations, mm. where they are, what their needs are. They need to assume um, that people won't just come into services, but proactively go out and meet with people where they're at with the needs that they identify. Mm. It's imperative that all the material that um, local health providers produce is completely accessible to everyone and it's using language that people understand and relate to. And finally, um, people don't always have to start from scratch. Um, lots of health information has already been spread through Gypsy and Traveller communities, so it's about tapping into pre-existing mm. um, peer networks and communities and ensuring that people who are spreading those um, mental health support and messages get the support that they need as well. So what recommendations do you have for policy makers? I think at a national level it's really important that NHS England incorporates Gypsy, Roma and Traveller communities into the NHS Data Dictionary. Mm. So local commissioners have an understanding of the needs of Gypsy and Traveller populations in the local area. There needs to be really clear accountability lines between NHS England and local CCGs to ensure that people are delivering support um, and, and services, mental health services particularly, to Gypsy and Traveller communities. I think when this is in place, we should see Gypsy and Traveller communities appearing more often in joint strategic needs assessments mm -hmm. and suicide prevention plans. It's so important as well that when we talk about local service providers that they are going and they're speaking with local Gypsy and Traveller communities and they're asking what do you need because it's not going to be the same across the whole country. Yeah. And many of the reasons why there are such great inequalities between Gypsies and Travellers and the rest of the population is to do with chronic exclusion across the wider social determinants of health by commissioning um, advocacy and outreach services. Maybe these can be overcome and we can actually take a preventative approach um, to poor mental health within Gypsy and Traveller communities. Really informative, Sarah. Thank you ever so much. Really appreciate it. Thank you. So after speaking to Sarah, I'm really surprised that Gypsy, Roma and Travellers are not being included in the NHS Data Dictionary. Sarah also mentioned something called Social Determinants of Health. I can't say I've heard much about it, so let's talk to Professor Margaret Greenfield. Let's find out a little bit more. So the social determinants of health, they're all of those elements which can impact on someone's well-being, both physical and mental. So it can be access to accommodation, mm -hmm. where someone's living, if they're on a site, homeless, whether they've experienced discrimination, racism, exclusion, employment, poverty, access to education, all those things impact dramatically on someone's well-being. And we know particularly the Women in Equalities Committee report that came out earlier this year mm. has found the vast, vast amount of discrimination and experiences of exclusion suffered by Gypsy and Traveller and Roma communities. It just crossed so many levels. One of the first things, I think, is to actually engage and develop a really clear strategy mm. to look at those things where we have the clear evidence of how people's mental health, their physical health, mm. their well-being and their families are being impacted negatively across multiple domains. There's lots of evidence out there. It's now down to government, policy, communities working together collaboratively to develop the best ways of engaging. We got the evidence, let's get out there and change it. At the end of this journey, I completely stand by everything I said at the very beginning. My community are suffering a health crisis. For my family and community's sake, I hope this film will encourage the NHS to include Gypsy, Roma and Traveller into the NHS Data Dictionary and for local services to take on the recommendations that we've heard to help young travellers from my community reach their full potential. So come on, let's work together to make a big difference.